This is Jack Jackson. We're going to be looking at the program called Graphmatica right now. This is a shareware program, and this is a program that we have a site license to at UA Fort Smith. So you should be able to use this uh, program to do some graphing and use it free of charge. Download it from www.graphmatica.com. Now, once I've gotten in here, I've gone to Options and gone to Graph Paper, and I did some changes on colors. I selected the white. Uh, background here and then I also selected uh, some things on borders and X, X uh, Y axes and so forth so that uh, things are uh, well I just selected like for example black on the X and Y axes and the grid lines to be uh, kind of a dark gray for example and that gives it a, a look like this so this is a little bit easier to, to see, and it looks better when you put these on graph paper. The default is a gr darker gray background, which is, you know, I don't like. I don't like the, the dark color so much. But regardless, we get in here, and this is how we go about working on our, our uh, graphs. We just go in here and uh, start typing, okay, and we just type in our formulas. So... Let's start with some easy examples. Y equals 2x. And of course we can graph that. Uh, of course it will do trig functions like y equals sine of, of x. And it will graph graphs like this. But one thing that's nice is you don't have to solve for x or solve for y, either one. So you can say 3x plus 2y equals 7, which of course is a line, but we don't have to solve for y. We could solve for y, but we don't have to. You can even do things that are relations that are not functions. y is not a function of x. And uh, say, not only can you do, for example, y equals x squared, you can do x equals y squared as well and get a different, get that, where in one case y is a function of the x, in the other case x is a function of y. But you can do ones that are x is neither x is a function of y nor y is a function of x. For example, the unit circle, x squared plus y squared equals one, or a circle with a bigger radius, like say the circle with radius uh, uh, square root of two. We use that one. Whoops. There we go. Or some other thing. If we want to go in here, we can kind of box in an area like this and hit the zoom button and it zooms in on that particular part if we would like to uh, more close up look. Um, that's supposed to clear the whole screen but for some reason it's not it's not doing it. Okay, when I'm moving around it does. Okay. Uh, so all of these are still here in our list. If we want to come back and just graph a particular one we can do that and look at a closer up version of it. We can go to uh, graph paper and select a tri trigonometric grid. We have a choice between uh, dotted lines for our grids. Um, let's see what are some of the other options. We can have just dots for the grid, like this, or we can have no, no grid lines at all, just the axes. Uh, and the way I prefer it, I prefer solid grid lines, but just maybe a, a lighter color. And so notice this trig scale does everything in fractions of pi. So there are fraction multiples of pi for the grid lines. So let me just go back to a, a standard uh, rectangular grid like this. If I want to get rid of a graph, I can click on it and hit the little X button. We'll clear it out. Now it's not even, it's no longer even in our list here. Okay, well, that's basic graphing. But we also have um, graphing that we can do that's parametric graphing. And it's really easy to do here. So we just say X equals, let's say, 2T plus 5, semicolon to separate. And space is optional here, but I put a space to make it easier to read. Y equals, and say, negative uh, 3T plus 4. 
Now, if we do this, now we need to get a specified T range, and we use the little curly braces here, and we go T colon, and a minimum and maximum T. So, for example, we go 0 to 1. This should give us a line segment when, uh, as we saw in our previous video, so if T is 0, we get 5, 4, and T is 1, we get 5 plus 2 is 7, and then negative 3 plus 4 is 1, negative 7, 1. And so we graph this. This is going to be a line segment. Uh, going from those uh, particular points at 5, 4, and it ends at 7, 1. Now, if I go from 0 to 2, for example, now it's going to extend that line segment down further. If I actually want to run it to from 0 to infinity, for example, I leave off this, and it'll graph it from 0 to infinity, Oh, it won't do that for t's. It will do that for x values. I have to actually put in something. But I can go for something really big, like 100, and it's going to run it off the screen here. Okay. Uh, let's do another one. Let's let's see. Let's take let's take the same t values here, but let's do sine of t here. And let's do t square here. Oh, let's see what happens with that one. Okay. Now sine of t is going to cycle from 0 to pi, 2 pi. So what if I go to 2 pi, which would be 2p here. That's going to cycle it once for, for that. And then it's going to go on around. So anyway, you can, you can experiment with doing all kinds of graphs here. Uh, let's do... Let's do this. Let's do t squared there and do 2t here. Okay, so let's take a look at, uh, let's clear everything out here. Okay, and take a look at this and see if it makes sense. So if we start at t is 0, this is going to be at 5. This is going to be at 4, so it starts at 5, 4. When t is 1, this will be at 6. And this will be at 6, so 6, 6. So it goes between there, but it notice it does it in a curved manner. Whereas if I just put this, that will go across the same place in a, in a little straight line pattern. Okay, so different, all kinds of different things you can experiment with here. Um, so just, just experiment with this a little bit. Try different different patterns. We can put some trig functions in there. Uh, 4 cosine of t and y is uh, how about 2 sine of t and let's run t from 0 to 2 pi and look what we get. We get an ellipse Okay, and so again, pretty easy to do parametric graphing. And notice it can do parametric graphing, and at the same time do just y equals 3x, just regular graphing. At the same time, it can also do polar graphing. R equals um, cosine of t, and we can graph that. So notice the graphing, the grid behind doesn't have anything to do with the graphs themselves. So here we have a polar graph, a regular Cartesian graph, and a uh, parametric graph uh, all together, okay, and we have a rectangular grid behind it. But we can also go to options and go to graph paper and say, show me the polar grid, and, but you can still do polar graphing or rectangular graphing or parametric graphing all at the same time in any particular combination. But if we're going to be doing polar graphing, we may very well want to want to look at a polar grid. Okay, let's see what happens. If I zoom in or zoom out, then it adjusts that a little bit there. If you want to change the grid range, you can also go to View and Grid Range here. This is like checking, changing the x-min and x-max on your calculator. So if I go from, say, negative 5 on the left to 5 on the right, 
and then bottom go to from negative 5 and I'll leave the top blank, it will automatically fix that with a square scale. I can also use these little uh, sliders on the sides to uh, change the window as well. So anyway, here we have a polar grid. Um, and suppose we might want to graph some interesting polar functions. Let's look at some. So notice that r equals cosine of t is actually a circle uh, with one end at the origin and the other end at 1, 0. If I change this to uh, 2 cosine t, I've doubled the radius, so now I've made it everything further away. So however far this is out here, this will be twice as far out at the same angle. So this one's out of distance of 1 is now at a distance of 2. Okay. If I change this to negative 2 cosine t, it's going to reflect that over here. Um, let's see, what if I change it to, instead of cosine of t, what if I change it to sine of t? Now it's pointing up. Okay, so let's clear that out. And let's do, okay, so here's r equals sine of t. What if I do sine of 2t? Look at that, you get a, these are called a rose. So the circle is actually a one leaf or one petal rose. And then we have a four leaf or four petal rose for the sine of 2t. Sine of 3t gets three petals evenly spaced out. Sine of 4t is, if you look, there's there are eight of them there. So there are actually uh, twice as many petals as this coefficient here. If you go around to pi, the problem is when, the, when it's an odd, those petals trace on top of each other. So the 10 petals that you get from going from, uh, from 0 to 2 pi are actually the same 5 petals twice. So when it's odd, this number here is the number of petals, and it traces it out from 0 to pi. And when this number is even, look what happens. You get, uh, you get, you get twice that many uh, petals. Leaves. Usually they're called leaves for some reason. They call it rows and then they call them leaves. Okay. Notice that if I take this one now and I multiply by uh, 2, it's now twice as big. Okay, so let me uh, let me clear that out. And let's go to back to uh, three three leaves. And notice that they're where the angles are here. Look what happens if I take this and replace t by, say, t plus, let's say, um, oh, let's see, mm, pi over, let's see, what is this angle right here? This angle, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six of them in pi, so it's pi over six. Look what happens here. Replace t by t plus pi over six. It actually wrote. It actually rotated the entire figure about the pole, of the origin, by an angle of negative pi over six. If I went back and put minus here, it's going to rotate the, the original blue one by pi over six. Okay, and so that's going to be. Whoops. That's going to be true in general. So, so rotating something is very easy to do in polar coordinates. Okay, so if you're in polar coordinates, uh, it could be anything here. Um, cosine, r, r equals cosine of, of uh, 3t and then say plus 1. Okay, so we get that shape there, and if I replace t by t minus, say, pi over 12, it's going to rotate that by pi over 12 um, in the pos positive direction, positive pi over 12. Okay.
shifting is very easy in um, par in, par in parametric or in XY coordinates. Okay, remember translations, horizontal vertical shifts. If you replace X by X minus H, it moves horizontally H units. And if you replace Y by Y minus K, it moves up or down uh, vertically K units. If you replace T by theta, uh, T is theta. So if you replace theta by theta minus um, phi, then it's going to rotate by an angle phi about the origin. Now, translations are not so easy to do in polar coordinates, and rotations are not so easy to do in parametric, I mean, in um, XY coordinates, but the ones that are real easy are translations in XY coordinates and rotations about the origin in polar coordinates. Now, you can even do this uh, R square equals. Cosine of x here. Uh, nope, it's not going to let me do that. It's going to have to. It's going to ha have to be able to be solved for r for this to work. Oh, it should have been t. Huh. Maybe it will do. Let it do. Let me do it. Yeah. So it will do that here. cubed. So we can get different, all kinds of different uh, expressions here. Okay, and so we can get some interesting looking graphs uh, doing these graphs in um, Graphmatica. So if you want to experiment with doing graphs, this is one of the easiest ways to, one of the easiest programs I know of how to, how to use it. And one thing that's nice about this is if you, just, if you just click, well actually you can just click this button right here or you can go to edit, copy graphs, uh, enhance meta file color is the easiest one. And then if you just open up your word processor, then you just, just do paste. And it'll paste that graph right into your uh, word processor and then you can resize it if you want, add text around it. So it's a really nice way to be able to uh, work with work with graphs. And of course this is, uh, like I said, we can do polar graphs, we can do parametric graphs, and while we've got a polar grid we can still go back and graph, you know, um, y equals x squared if we want, and good old xy uh, coordinates. So you can do both polar and parametric and uh, regular uh, XY graphing all at the same time. You don't have to solve for XY. So it's a pretty, pretty slick program. Nice uh, graphics and uh, shareware program. So it's, it's free for us to use it.